Hi friends, in this video, let's talk about dead logs in SQL Server. Dead logs is a very common concept in each and every technology. First of all, what is a dead log? Dead log is nothing but when two process, when two processes request for a same resource. So that time dead log is going to occur. So let me help you to understand what is a deadlock in pictorial way. Let us say, so there is a two resources. This is a resource one and uh, this is a resource two. Okay, so I have a two processes as well. So one process is in this side. So other process is in uh, this side. Okay, so let me make a, a note here. So this is a one of resource one, resource one. This is a resource uh, two. So this is a process one. This is a process two. Now, so the process one is uh, have a work with process one need to need to work with a resource one, and again the same way process one need resource two as well. And in the similar way, in the similar way. Process 2 need resource 1 and process 2 needs even resource 2 as well. So that time, so here if you see two processes, two process need resource 1, two process need resource 1 and two process need resource 2 as well. In this scenario, deadlock is going to occur. So in this scenario, deadlock is going to occur. Then how to resolve it? Ideally, so if you want to go for a manual process, then my whenever if the first request comes from a process one then obviously yes the process two request is going to wait the similar way for this resource two if the first request comes from process two then obviously yes process one request is going to wait but in the sql server so what is the behavior in the sql server what is the behavior so in the sql server my sql server is going to identify a particular process is going to be a victim my SQL server is going to identify a particular process to be a victim and the other process is going to complete. So that is how my SQL server is going to handle these kind of deadlocks. So let me show you practically how to handle deadlocks or how to create a deadlocks here. In this example, I will show you how to create a deadlocks and how my SQL server is going to handle that particular victims. So let me go to SQL server and let me show you the base. So what are all the tables I am going to use and what is the data here? If you see, I am going to use two tables. One is a customer one table. The other one is a customer two table. So if you see the structure of the tables, so both the tables have a similar structure. So ID customer, customer name, location, ID customer, customer name and location. So both the tables have a same structure and same columns and both are empty as of now. So I am going to insert one row to the each and every table. So one row to the customer one table. If you see, I'm going to insert only one row and with a data of one is the customer ID. Gary is the customer name. USA is the location. So let me run this particular insert query. So when I run this query, it is going to insert data into customer one. So when I run a second query, it is going to insert a data into customer two. So if you see the select queries, so both if you run the both the select queries, you can see one one row each table one one row contains each table. So now, so this is a very common process till now, like we set up the environment for our deadlocks situation. Now, so let me run ideally if you go to the picture. So two processes are going to utilize the same resource. So that time deadlock is going to occur. Now let me create a scenario for this uh, uh, resource utilization. So now in this scenario, if you see in this scenario, so I am trying to update means one request comes from the for customer one, the other request also uh, planning to work with a customer one. So that time deadlock is going to happen even on the customer two table as well. So one request comes from one side, other request also come from different side on the same table. So that time deadlock is going to happen. So now let me go to the situation where so if you see this so this is a statement which what is happening here is i have a begin transaction under the transaction 
So I am planning to update the location in the customer table one. In the customer one, I'm going to update a location. I have only one record. I don't need to write a where condition here. In this as a second statement, I am going to update the second customer table location transaction one. And at last, I'm going to commit it. So if you see the second um, request from a different process, process so this is my second transaction so begin transaction under that i have a second i am going to update first is the second table second is the first table if you see if you compare both the requests so in this first transaction i am planning to update the customer one but in the second transaction i am planning to update the customer two first okay it means that so when i run first three lines of code so it is going to block the customer one so when I run here, these first three lines, it is going to block the customer two. Next. So when I run this statement, it means that customer two is blocked by this transaction. So that time deadlock is going to happen here. So when I run this statement, it means that customer one is blocked by this transaction. It means that deadlock is happening. So means, so this window, query two window is planning to access this customer uh, two table, but it is blocked by query three window. But here, query three window, customer one, trying to access customer one but it is blocked by query to window okay now let me show you ideally uh, currently i have only one record currently i have only one record to update that particular record it may not take more than a second but if you see the deadlock scenario it will take a while it takes a while now so let me run the first three lines it means that i am going to lock this particular customer one table let me run this if you see this one row is affected and the customer one table is locked now let's come here Let's run this. If you run this, yeah. So here, so one row is affected and the customer two table is locked. Now let's try to run the customer two here because customer two is locked here. Let me run here. If you see, it is executing. Even though I have one row, it is executing. Let me run this statement. Let's run this. Yeah, it is still executing. Yeah, if you see here, so as I told you, first transaction is completed. And the second transaction is failed with a particular error. So it means that transaction process ID 58 was deadlocked on locked resources with another process has been chosen as a deadlock victim. So run the transaction. Rerun the transaction. Means my SQL Server it automatically identifies a victim and it stops that particular query execution. It stops the particular query execution. Now, so if you see this, this entire uh, two statements has been executed but when we come here this statement is failed okay so now i need to run the commit transaction to see the result so as of now i am not means i did not run the commit transaction let me go to the uh, original first window and let me try to see the data so if i see the data so again my select query even though i have one record so even though my select query is taking long time because transaction is not committed Transaction is not committed. Let me stop this query. So you can see the query is cancelled by the user. Even though I have one record, but still my select query is running for a while. So let me go back to the transaction and commit the transaction. So then I can see the results here. Let me go back to the query window. How to commit the transaction? You can simply run the commit transaction. So if you commit the transaction, it means that so you are agreeing with these two update statements. So why we need to commit the transaction? Because I have started the transaction with a begin transaction statement. So can I run a single commit transaction? Yes, you can run. Let's run this particular statement. Yeah. Commit transaction. So now let's go to the second statement. Three yeah, here. So you can commit this transaction. Okay. So here if you see, when you commit the second transaction, so the commit, tra uh, commit transaction request has no corresponding begin transaction. Because if you remember, if you remember, so this statement got failed because this window is identified as a victim. So to show you to show you the error message, so I ran this commit transaction. Means it means that so these statements have been not executed at all. To see the results, let's go back to the select query and run that. Let me go to the original query. Now let me run this. If you see, I am going to get the results in a, within a less than a second. Now if you see this, the location is transaction one and transaction one because transaction two is not completed at all because transaction two identified as a victim in my scenario. So this is how I am going to face the deadlocks in the SQL server. So whenever a deadlock occurs in the SQL server, my SQL server is going to identify a victim 
and it automatically closes that particular transaction. So if you want to execute the transaction again, you need to rerun that particular transaction. So that is how my SQL Server is going to identify. So there is a mechanism to identify a victims also. We'll talk about that uh, uh, concept in the later videos. So uh, that's it. So this is in this video we talked about how to handle or how to identify the deadlocks where at what scenario deadlocks occurs. That's it. Thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please subscribe and share with all your friends and provide your valuable feedback. Thank you. That's it.